Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I'm, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T-O-N-Y. And the second word is and, spelled A-N-D. And the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. Last week we talked about how the word idea and the word inspiration uh, tells us that God is talking to us. We get ideas from God and we get inspirations from God. We do not manufacture or create ideas or inspirations. We don't come up with them ourselves. But God puts the ideas and inspirations into our mind. And so it's good to talk to God about whatever inspirations come into our mind. Uh, this week, let's talk about some of the things that happen to us during our daily life. I mean, it's good to notice what's going on, what's happening to us, and uh, and look for God in them, especially if we're doing what we talked about last week, which is talking to God, asking him questions, uh, especially asking him questions about ideas that pop into our head. Okay, so if we do that, we're spending time with God during the day, talking to him and doing things that he inspires us to do, or he puts an idea in our head. We do those things, and then we see, as we talked about last week, we see fruits, uh, results, uh, and God sends us little signs that he's pleased with us, that he was, he, was, he was in fact with us. And I talked about how that's in the book of Mark, chapter 16 at the very end. It says in the Bible that God was sending clues that he was with his apostles as they were working their miracles. All right, so this week we're going to talk a little bit about actually noticing things that do happen in our lives every day and trying to notice God in them. Um, and it helps to tell our children that these, you know, to pay attention to things happening. Uh, like, for example, we might have a near, a near car accident. Let me tell you about one that I almost had. I was parked in, in a parking lot. Uh, I had gone for exercise, and I got to the car, and I loaded up the trunk, and I got into the car, and I was fumbling with some papers. So I was in the car for a while, and I got an idea from God to be careful as I was pulling out because it's a parking lot and somebody might come driving by too quickly. So I'm paying attention to that. You know, God put that idea in my head. So very carefully, I buckled up. I started the car. I made sure I was not rushing. I looked to the left and looked at everything coming from the left side. I was going to pull out of my parking place and turn. Uh, I was going to go pull out and turn right. So what was going to happen was I was going to start the car, and when I stepped on the gas, I was going to turn to the right side. So I'm in the car, and I look to the left, make sure nothing's coming. Then I look to the right, make sure nothing's coming from the right, but I was ready to move out because it's a very, very large parking lot, 
And when I looked to the left, I saw, you know, something like, I don't know, uh, 10% of a mile maybe. Uh, but I saw enough distance when I looked to the left that I could pull out because I was in a parking lot. How fast could a car be going? Well, before I took my foot off the brake and stepped on the gas, I got an idea to look to the left one more time. And thank God I did that because when I, I looked to the left, I noticed a car was coming down through the parking lot at something like, I think, 40 miles an hour. And they were probably six inches away from my car, so it wouldn't have taken very long to have me pull out and smash right into them. And I, it took my breath away. It was, it was such a phenomenon because, again, let me tell you, I looked to the left and I looked to the right very quickly and ready to pull out because there was nothing out there. And I got an idea to look to the left one more time. Thank God, because I would have pulled out of my parking place and got whacked by something at 40 miles an hour in a parking lot. So those are th cases where you pay attention to the idea God sends you and you're thankful and grateful for it. Another thing that happens to us during the day and happens to me often, I get an idea to call somebody. So I get an idea, which comes from God, right? You know, because I, Deo, the spelling of idea is I plus Deo, and Deo is the Latin word for God. So clearly when you get an idea, it's something God is telling you. So I get an idea to call my brother or call one of my children or send a text to one of my children. I mean, this, this happens at least, I would say, four times a week. So four times a week, I get the thought. And as I go to do it, before I can get it done, I get a text from my children or I get a phone call from my brother. So it's remarkable. Now, this has been happening to me for like the last 10 years that I'm aware of and certainly makes me see my friend God is, is talking to me. He's doing these things for me, puts the idea in my head. He knows what's going to happen. He knows the call is going to come in and surprise me. And, he, and that's how God deals with us, because he's our best friend and he's God. You see, if any of our human friends could do these things, you know, one of your human friends, if they could do this for you, they would do it to, you know, bring you great joy. Well, they can't do it, but God can, and he does it to bring us great joy. Um, another thing that happens to me sometimes is uh, I remember I got a shirt as a gift, and I was wearing it for the first time. And I was out in public with it, and I, I thought, you know, it was a strange pattern, and I thought, I don't know, I don't know if I like it, but uh, uh, I chose it for that day. I had an idea to choose it. And I went to a shopping mall. I was out looking at some other things of, to purchase, and I had two people come up to me and compliment my shirt. And I, so, you know, God had me go through this experience. It brought me great joy, and I, it confirmed my doubts in my mind that I thought maybe the shirt was ugly. Here are two people out of the blue at different times over maybe a, an hour and a half period at the mall uh, approached me and told me that they thought my shirt was a fantastic shirt. So it's not a real major thing, but it gives evidence that God is working again in our lives because God can do these things. He puts the idea in somebody else's head. He encourages them to come over to me, a stranger, and compliment. He has two people do that at the mall. You see what I mean? He's trying to bring us joy because he's God and he is our best friend. Another thing that happens often, uh, especially when I'm out shopping or in public, of course, uh, which I like to comment about because it becomes a funny story, but you'll be walking towards some people and you'll notice that uh, they're very cordial and friendly people and uh, your eyes meet, meet their eyes and maybe you gave them a favorable look, I don't know. But they smile very cheerfully. They put a, you can see the white of their teeth. They're smiling and then they wave. They wave, you know, so they, or they nod their head. Now, the waving of the hand and the nodding of their head is pretty important. This is my attempt to tell you a joke. Because if somebody looks at you and just smiles, you don't know if they're looking at you and laughing at you <laughs> because you've got a funny hat on um, or maybe you've got a, a crazy looking shirt on. Uh, but when they wave and they smile, that gives you a good example that, no, they're acknowledging you and smiling at you. Uh, um, I'm sorry, they're smiling with you instead of at you. You're not their joke. Uh, I. I hope that was a good joke. So when you, when I see somebody smiling at me, I wave to them, 
and hopefully when they wave back it gives me peace that they weren't laughing at me. Uh, one other thing that happens once in a while, but it happens to so many people, I think we should maybe write a book about it and, and or poll the universe and see how many people have this happen to them every every year. But here's something that happens. Uh, you'll be picking up a book or opening a box somewhere in your house uh, and uh, a, a photograph will fall out of the book or fall out of the box onto the floor or onto the table. And this happens to many, many people. I hear these stories. And if you pay attention to it, it turns out to be some kind of a miracle that God is trying to put that picture out there for some reason. So I, I hear many coincidence stories. Uh, I, I know we had one on our show here a while back uh, where uh, I wished somebody a happy birthday. And uh, there was a, a, a case of where somebody in their family uh, had had a picture fall out of somewhere like that to remind them to call the same person and wish them a happy birthday. So it was God's way of telling somebody he had a picture uh, fall out of some place in front of someone to remind them to say happy birthday to someone. Okay. Our next coincidence miracle is I had to uh, go for some testing at a hospital uh, again recently. I've had a couple of these uh, over the last month now, and I was concerned. Uh, uh, that it was going to result in surgery. We were going to have some x-rays, and then we're going to have to go to surgery. So I was concerned about it. I've had a couple of these, as I say, happen. Um, but as I pulled out of my driveway to head over to the hospital, the first car coming toward me had a license plate number 4444. It was four fours instead of three fours, which is uh, three fours is a very holy number. Uh, well, I went to the meeting, and the meeting went well, and I got out of the car. I mean, I'm sorry, I got out of the meeting. I went to my car, and when I got to my car, uh, it I saw the clock on the dashboard uh, just turned to 4.44 p.m., and that brought me great joy because now I had a confirmation that uh, I saw three fours, uh, really four fours, on the way to the hospital for the x-ray, and now after... I hadn't heard the results of the x-rays yet, but uh, I, I was given some peace because God had me arrive at my car at exactly as the clock was changing to 4.44 p.m. And once you know numbers, what the meaning of numbers are, uh, then you can see that, the, that God uses numbers to talk to you. And this is very common in the lives of the saints as well. Uh, and, you know, God uses numbers like Morse code when you know what the numbers are. Now, in our book, uh, in the free audio book you can get on our website, if you listen to episode number 15, uh, you'll get all you need to know about numbers. Or if you purchased a book from Amazon, uh, you'll find it uh, toward the end of the book. In the table of contents, it talks about the history of numbers. But episode 15, it's all for free. On our, let me give you our website again. If you Google W. C-A-T, that's W-C-A-T, so you, you Google W-C-A-T radio dot com slash miracles slash. One more time now, Google W-C-A-T radio dot com slash miracles slash. And when you get to that web page, go to episode 15. If you didn't get this, you can email me at tonyand777 at aol.com. Once again, you can email me at my email with your miracle stories or to ask me about the history of numbers. And my email address is tony, spelled T-O-N-Y, then the word and, A-N-D, at aol.com. One more time, tonyand777 at aol.com. God bless you all. I'll talk to you next week. Mm-hmm.